All offerings of securities that involve interstate commerce, which invokes the federal securities laws, either have to be registered, specifically exempt, or they're illegal. So those are really the only three choices. Um, and when I say they're illegal, they violate Section 5 of the 33 Act that we spoke about last week. Um, another point to keep in mind at all times, even if they're exempt from federal and or state registration requirements, um, the anti-fraud rules are going to apply. So uh, you still can't um, lie, mislead, or uh, omit material things in your conversations about them. Um, the other point to make is um, not all federal registration exemptions preempt the state law registration requirements. We talked about that last week. We'll talk about that a little more today. Um, something to keep in mind. So we talked about they need to be registered unless they're exempt. We talked about two main exemptions. We talked about Reg A, which was for small offerings. The current Reg A exemption exempts offerings up to $5 million. And then we talked about Reg D, which are non-public or private offerings. We talked about the fact uh, that the statute itself does not define non-public, which is why you find it in quotes on your slides, um, but you find some guidance uh, in Reg D, some safe harbors for um, the types of solicitations you can do. Uh, under the new 506C, which we'll talk about today, are there exceptions? Um, the answer is yes. The SEC staff gave its uh, initial guidance on this in, in 1996 in a no action letter. A no action letter for those uh, not with the SEC uh, is staff guidance. It's not necessarily law, but it's interpretive guidance um, and can be looked to. They're published. You can find them on Lexis, Westlaw. Um, IPO net was the no action letter. Uh, for 1996 that gave some guidance on when you might be able to utilize the internet and not trigger general solicitation.